Hey guys, Mr. Torres here. Hope you guys are doing okay. So, uh, for the remainder of the school year, which is about roughly maybe two or three more weeks or so, uh, we're going to focus mainly on historical thinking skills. So we're going to work on developing those skills and making sure that uh, we are keeping up with them because these historical thinking skills are very important when we're looking at history and also they're very important in any of our life situations, okay? So, uh, what a skill we're going to be mainly focusing on this week is sourcing, okay? So, there's sourcing, there's corroboration, there's contextualiz contextualization, and close reading. Uh, those are going to be the big ones that we're going to be focusing on. So, this week, you're going to have two very short activities uh, focusing on sourcing. So, when we're looking at sourcing, we're looking at this part right here where it says sourcing. We're looking at these questions that we need to ask ourselves when we're looking at documents. Who wrote this? What is the author's perspective? When was it written? Where was it written? Why was it written? And is the document trustworthy? Okay. Now, on the second activity that you will do or the second document that you will work with, there will be some contextualization, but I'll go over that a little bit later, okay? But our big thing that we are focusing on this week is sourcing, all right? So let's take a look at the documents that you're gonna be working on this week, okay? So if you did the French Revolution choice board, uh, this is gonna look very familiar. Um, so I figured, hey, why not try it again? You know, practice makes perfect, okay? So this is called the uh, Napoleon's Retreat, all right? And again, with sourcing, we are looking at who wrote it, what's the author's perspective, when was it written, where was it written, and why was it written, and is it trustworthy? So keeping all those questions in mind, we're gonna look at these directions and kind of go through the information. So the directions say, use the image, this one right here, to answer some questions. The title of this is called The Burning of Moscow, which is when Napoleon went to go uh, to Russia and tried, he invaded Russia and was trying to take over Russia, but he did not really take into consideration the weather uh, during the time he was leaving, which I believe he left like in September and October. Yeah, Russia gets pretty darn cold. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so this is The Burning of Moscow where the Russians pretty much set Moscow on fire to prevent Napoleon from trying to set up shop and stay there. But anyway, so uh, this is called the Burning of Moscow, uh, September 14th, 1812, the retreat of Napoleon, okay? This was done by American Fine Art Company, okay? And we are working on the historical thinking skill of sourcing and this photograph or this painting was done in 1894 okay so if we do our math we need to think about what is 1894 minus 1812 when Napoleon was actually there this was 82 years after the fact so definitely keep that in mind 82 years after Napoleon okay so um, let's take a look at our question the question says, the burning of Moscow helps historians understand what happened during Napoleon's attack on Moscow in 1812. Be sure to look at the information highlighted in pink before writing your answer. Do you agree or disagree? So does this picture help historians understand what happened with the burning of Moscow in 1812? Okay, so take a look at the information that we've gone over um, about this painting or this picture. Would it help? This painting was created in 1894, which was 80 years after Napoleon. And it was done by American Fine Art Company. Napoleon was French and he invaded Russia. I don't see anything French or Russian in that name of the company. Hmm. So think about that. Would this help? You need to explain. So knowing what we know about this document, 
Is it trustworthy? Can we trust this document to tell the truth of how things were during Napoleon's, uh, when Napoleon was in Russia and they burnt it down? Is it trustworthy? 80 years after a fact, not an American artist or company? Hmm. Okay. So think about those questions to answer this here. Okay. Now, your second document, and if it is too small, just hit the present button and it will make it bigger. Okay. Uh, your second document that you are going to look at, it is um, called the Haitian Revolution. And I really wish I was there to teach you guys about the Haitian Revolution. I love it. We had a document ready, not a document, a DBQ ready to go about it. I just love talking about Louverture. Excellent, excellent stuff I had about it. But anyway, um, so you are going to look at sourcing and you're going to look at context and cooperation. That's a lot of different things. So let's take a look at those real quick. So you're using sourcing, context, when and where was the documents written, okay? We're looking at that. What's, the, what's different then? What was the same? Okay, now let's take a look at cooperation, some questions that you got to think about. What are the other documents saying? So you're looking at two documents. So you need to think about what are these two documents trying to tell you? What's going on? Do the documents agree? Do they sound like they are saying the same things? Uh, what doc, uh, which of the documents do you think are most reliable? So since we are comparing two documents, we're going to be doing a lot of cooperation and a lot of sourcing and a little bit of context. Okay. So uh, if you take a look at document A, it says the following is a proclamation widely dispersed to the inhabitants or the people living in Saint uh, Domingo or Saint Domingue. No, yes, yeah, Saint Domingo. Saint Domingue. I'm sorry, Saint Domingue. From the uh, French First Consul Napoleon Bonaparte and the French Secretary of State on November 8th, 1801. So this is coming from Napoleon and he is sending this document to Saint Domingue, which was which is today Haiti. Um, so you will read that. And then the second document. It says, document B, the following is an excerpt or a piece from a letter to a Haitian general by Haitian revolutionary leader Toussaint Louverture on February 9th, 1802. So these documents are almost, well, they're less than a year apart. Okay, so the first one's from Napoleon and it's going to the island of Saint Domingue. The second one is from Toussaint Louverture to a revolutionary uh, general or a Haitian general. I'm sorry. And then you're gonna look at them. You're gonna look at the sources. You're gonna look at, and you're gonna ask yourself these questions right here. Number one, many Haitians supported independence from France. How does document A provide evidence that many Haitians opposed French rule? So you're going to look back at document A and you're going to read it really in detail and you're going to look for, is there anything in this document that tells you that Haitians did not, that Haitians did not want French rule, did not want the French taking them over. Okay. Second one. Document, I'm sorry, question two. How does document B also provide evidence that many Haitians opposed the French rule? Okay. So again, you're looking at document B and you're looking for evidence of uh, of um, where, did, where it says Haitians oppose French rule. Now, what we have to think about this is, is these documents are not going to flat out say, hey, Haitians oppose French rule right here. You have to read between the lines on these two. This is the cooperation part. Okay, you're going to have to read between the lines. So 
just to kind of put it out there real quick, if you look at document B, this is from a, a this is an excerpt from a letter to a Haitian general by Haitian revolutionary Toussaint Louverture. So this is coming from Toussaint Louverture. He says, my dear people, the whites have resolved to destroy our liberty and have therefore brought a force uh, consummate to their intentions. Now, what we got to think about too is, is that Haiti or Saint-Domingue is owned by the French. Okay, so he's talking about in general, French people that live in Haiti. He says, distress the whites, they will, do, they will betray you if they can. Their desire eventually manifested is the re restoration of slavery. I therefore give you a carte, a carte blanche for you to conduct. All which you shall do will be done. Raise the cultivators in mass and convince them of the truth. And they must place no confidence in those artful agents, the French, who may have secretly received the proclamations of the white man from France and would cultivate them, uh, just can see, classically, in order to seduce the friends of liberty. I rely entirely upon you and leave you completely at liberty to perform everything which may be requisite to free us from the horrid yoke which we are threatened. I wish you good health. So, ultimately, if you read that last part, he says, free us. So, do you think he likes the French controlling Haiti, which was a very large slave colony at one point, okay? So, again, you're gonna have to read between the lines and see where they're talking about they don't like the French controlling them, okay? Um, so this one's gonna be a tricky one, but it's a skill that's necessary. Okay, you gotta read the two documents and compare. So, this is all I have for you guys to work on this week. If you have any questions, always feel free to email me at etorres at usd259.net, okay? Uh, or you can leave a comment comment on uh, the assignment and I'll look at it and I will explain it more in detail, okay? So good luck. Hit me up if you have any questions and I'll talk to you guys later. See you later. Bye-bye.